Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, and today, I would like to present um, my findings for my master's thesis, which was uh, titled, Cigarette Smoke Extracts Inhibits M2 Macrophage Polarization. And inhibition of RE1 XPP1 pathway exacerbated that behavior. And I study at McMaster University. Now, this is a global health crisis. The fact that um, not only do chronic obstructive pulmonary disorders um, cigarette smoking accounts for 80% of these cases. COPD will be the third leading uh, killer in 2020. Additionally, lung cancer cases, 80% of these cases, uh, individuals were smoking cigarettes. Now, the main uh, pathology within this, or the mechanism, I should say, is that immune uh, infiltration occurs in which we see massive amounts of neutrophils and macrophages. Now, when we actually have mice that are exposed to cigarette smoke uh, in vivo for two weeks, we see an increase in cellular infiltration and immune cell uh, upregulation, uh, immune cell infiltration in terms of macrophages and neutrophils, as you can see. And specifically for our intents and purposes, we will be focusing specifically on uh, macrophage infiltration. And macrophages themselves uh, can actually uh, be polarized. And what that means is essentially they exhibit different types of behavior um, that allows for, that it changes depending on context of the stimulus. And this diagram right here is just to give an appreciation of um, the biochemical differences between M1 and M2 macrophages. And M2 macrophage will have massive amounts of mitochondrial biogenesis and uh, from IL-4 and IL-3, 13 induction, it will polarize this macrophage. Um, and it'll be involved in tissue remodeling, allowing it to you know, heal wounds, for example. And this is identified in the cytokines IL-10 and TGF beta. And these are just to give an appreciation of the M2 macrophage being different than the M1 macrophage. The M1 macrophage you commonly know as the classical macrophage, the one that uh, eats bacteria and uh, defeats other types of uh, viruses. And interferon gamma and LPS causes in a nuclear factor kappa B uh, that upregulates a lot of inflammatory cytokines leading to edema and other recruitment of immune cells creating this positive feedback loop. And a lot of these cytokines and chemokines such as IL-1 alpha, beta, IL-12, IL-18, IL-6, they're all involved in this inflammation. Now, where does IRE-1 XPP-1 fall in this? And I know a lot of you might not have heard of it. However, it's an integral part of this endoplasmic reticulum stress response and this organelle within every single eukaryotic cell. Um, IRE1 is even found in yeast and it's integrated in a transmembrane uh, manner within the endoplasmic reticulum. And when it actually detects misfolded protein due to changes in the environment, and um, this diagram on the left uh, can actually show how um, airborne unknown substances entering our lungs can cause immune cells, for example, to respond to this change in environment by upregulating different misfolded protein to try to um, adapt to its new environment by changing the membrane rigidity, et cetera. And one protein called IRE1, as I mentioned here, can actually uh, dissociate from GRIP78, become activated, and gain unique endoplasmic um, uh, endonuclease activity, allowing it to cleave cytoplasmic RNA. And one it actually specifically and only cleaves is, our, is XPP1. And spliced XPP1, when it is spliced by this endonuclease activity of IRE1 that's been activated, it allows it to become a transcription factor entering the nucleus that then allows it to upregulate chaperones um, and even change lipid synthesis. However, we were specifically interested in if it can actually affect macrophage polarization. Now, this is uh, an interesting uh, electron microscopy uh, experiment done within our lab in which we have an M0 or an undifferentiated, unpolarized mature macrophage. And as you can see, a lot of lipid droplets, but not a robust uh, endoplasmic reticulum. However, when we polarize these macrophages using IL-4 or IL-13, the typical M2 um, concoction, and also at IL-6, which further polarizes it, we're able to see a very robust endoplasmic reticulum. Um, 
and this suggests that this is regulated by IR1 XB1, which controls um, ER expansion through uh, lipid biogenesis. Now, these are a lot of graphs, and I will go through this slowly. CCR7 and CD86, respectively, are M1 markers, and CD163 and Manos receptor are M2 markers. And they find with the application uh, or treatment, I should say, of a chemical chaperone called PBA, there's a down regulation, a statistically significant down regulation of M2 polarization. However, M1 macrophages are unaffected. And this is similar with CHOP knockout mice. And CHOP is an important ER, uh, downstream ER um, uh, regulator. And when they find uh, they induce M1 or M2 polarization within these knockout mice, they find that within their macrophages, there's a decrease in the M2 polarization, suggesting that there is a link between uh, the endoplasmic reticulum stress response and macrophage polarization. Furthermore, CCL18, an indicator of M2 macrophage polarization at the genetic and at the uh, cytokine secretion level, when we induce M2 macrophage polarization and IL-6 increasing that further, we find that when we use a specific inhibitor for the endonucleotide of IR1 XBB1, we identify that CCL18 actually decreases, and this is indicative in both the mRNA and the cytokine level. Now, in terms of acting M1, M2 polarization, the ER stress response and cigarette smoke together, there was actually a, a very insightful article by Juan in 2014 that identified that within mice and uh, human monocytic cell lines, so ANO are macrophages and TFP1 are monocytic cell lines. When they add cigarette smoke extract to these cells through CD163, they're able to identify and increase M2 polarization, suggesting that cigarette smoke may have uh, a way of inducing M2 polarization, and this potentially could happen through the ER stress response. Now, the hypothesis, hypothesis was that cigarette smoke would induce an M2 macrophage polarization, and using IRE1 B1 inhibition, we were able to then downregulate. Uh, M2 macrophage polarization. Now, our first aim that I'll go into is to establish that cigarette smoke activates the IR1 XC1 pathway, then to determine if the cigarette smoke exposure affects the polarization, then to determine if an inhibitor can actually change the uh, M2 uh, uh, related cytokines and markers. Now, we mainly asked if there was evidence of XBP1 splicing from cigarette smoke exposure and macrophages. And to accomplish this, we used qPCR analysis of THP1 uh, cells um, that were differentiated into macrophages using PMA and six hour treatment of cigarette smoke extract. And we essentially found that yes, cigarette smoke extract did increase splice XBP1 in a almost threefold um, effect. And by confirming this, we were able then to then test if indeed cigarette smoke exposure is affecting this M1 or M2 polarization pathway. And how we accomplished this was using a, um, a multiplex assay in which we analyze multiple cytokines and multiple markers of M1 and 2. And these are essentially outlining the polarization concoctions that we use, LPS and interferon gamma for M1, IL-4 and IL-13 for M2. And we later add IL-6 as well because it further polarizes these M2 macrophages. And at three days uh, after their, their differentiation and polarization, we collected supernatant and we added uh, cigarette smoke as well when uh, relevant. And we analyzed arginase to determine M2 macrophage polarization. Now, I'll specifically show you the findings on M1 for and interestingly enough, cigarette smoke in a dose-dependent manner decreased uh, the cytokine secretion of IL-12P40 and its mature form IL-12P70 in a dose-dependent manner. And again, IL-12P40 is a subunit of IL-12P70, sorry. And um, this identifies that indeed cigarette smoke is actually inhibiting M1 macrophage polarization. And we further confirm this through identifying IL-18, another M1 macrophage uh, marker and a 10% cigarette smoke extract, the, the same dose that was causing splice XBB1 activation, it is over decreased. 
Um, and we saw similar findings with IL-1 alpha as well. So there's a similar pattern uh, in a decrease in M1 polarization. However, um, in MDC, we also saw a decrease as well. However, with CP3, it was unaffected by cigarette smoke extract um, inhibition. So essentially, this states that uh, there's a very specific response with uh, M cigarette smoke decreasing M1 macrophage polarization um, and it's overall mixed. Now, what we noticed was with bleomycin-affected mice compared to, and these are both chronic models, essentially bleomycin at 21 days uh, shows scarring, indicative of M2 macrophage polarization. However, at cigarette smoke exposure in eight months, they, these mice show no arginase at all. So we hypothesize if there would be any changes from cigarette smoke in terms of M2 polarization. Would it decrease it the same way that it did with uh, M1? And what we noticed is this is the same sort of uh, uh, diagram, except we use IL-4 and IL-3 and IL-6. What we noticed is CCL18 was decreased. So in fact, our, we I found out that actually M2 macrophage polarization was decreased from a dose-dependent uh, increase in cigarette smoke extra. And when we added IL-6, which is showing to increase uh, the CCL18 uh, secretion, the same decrease was identified. And arginase, which is which is the gold standard for identifying M2 macrophage polarization, it was also decreased from cigarette smoke extract. And at 10%, we saw the massive decrease. And essentially, this supports these in vivo findings that there is no indicative arginase uh, um, expression showing that there's a down relation overall into mobilization. Um, now, essentially, we want to use an IRE1 XPP1 inhibitor, and we use STF 0830102 uh, to accomplish this. And we tested this in M1 and M2. And with M1, there was no statistical significant difference with, with using uh, cigarette smoke and, and STF. So cigarette smoke did not truly uh, upregulate any genes of M1. However, with M2, what we saw was we saw an increase in CCL18 with M2. However, when we used cigarette smoke extract, we saw a downregulation in the expression at the genetic level using nanostring technology, and essentially STF further decreased the expression of CCL18. FN1 also showed a decrease in cigarette smoke extract application. However, the inhibitor did not affect it much. Furthermore, we saw an increase in ER stress markers from using the IRE1 XPP1 inhibitor, suggesting that, in fact, other than alleviating ER stress, inhibiting IRE1 XPP1 actually further exacerbated uh, the endoplasmic reticulum stress, which may contribute to the actual downregulation of M2 macrophage polarization. Yes, and this, these findings essentially confirm that we did not reverse the phenotype uh, caused by cigarette smoke, and in fact, we actually further worsened it. Um, and these are the overall findings. The finding that SPICE XPV1 does indeed occur from cigarette smoke in macrophages. However, cigarette smoke inhibits the M2 macrophage polarization. So these are contradictory to what one was showing in 2014. In addition, RE1 XPV1 has protective effects by maintaining cellular homeostasis. So in fact, we may be uh, changing the actual homeostatic um, effects of IRE1 XPP1 upregulation that actually adapts the cell to its new environment. Now, the implications in humans specifically, scientists have found that cigarette smoke does skew the M1, M2 macrophage polarization uh, in COPD. So it'd be very interesting to identify how IRE1 XPP1 plays a role within um, humans, specifically in vivo implications in global health. And this is just a satellite image from NASA that just shows particulate matter of 2.5 microns. And cigarette smoke has a lot of particulate matter and oxidative species has 10 to the power of, uh, one times 10 to the power of 16 oxidative species per puff. So in a sense, these findings can now be transitioned to pollution and analyzing how this global problem of pollution, um, how, how does macrophage polarization change from, from a problem such as that? So in terms of our further directions, we're interested in identifying how this ER stress response can be protective. Furthermore, there is a polymorphism for RE1 XBB1 in humans. And to understand if that could actually protect people against certain uh, pollution-related um, chronic lung disease, for example, not everyone who smokes gets 
COPD or lung cancer. However, people who have COPD and lung cancer, they have smoked. So to understand the polymorphism in that regard can further help us to predict um, who may be at risk for developing chronic lung disease. And essentially, the treatment of patients target this M2 polarization. Again, we use an RE1-XPV1 inhibitor. Perhaps there needs to be ways to in further enhance the RE1-XPV1 inhibitor uh, it pathway, and that could be done through chemical chaperones. And I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge my team, the ASK Lab, who really supported me throughout my master's, University McMaster Immunology Research Center, where I did these uh, studies along with the Arsu Institute of Respiratory Health. And um, thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Sohil. That was a great presentation. Uh, in the interest of time, we only have time for one question. Uh, but the question is, is are, are there any data about how these changes resolve or if they remain the same after quitting smoking? Yes, yes. these are very, these are this is very, very, very interesting. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm I'm a bit of echo. This is very interesting simply because we do have some preliminary clinical data that shows um, people who have COP or people who have idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, if they've been smoking for a very long time and then the doctor then quits, tells them to quit smoking, in many cases it actually reduced their life expectancy. So it was harmful to quit smoking for patients who've been smoking for so long and, and had idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So in a way, um, the, the cigarette smoke perhaps could be changing the polarization of M2 or M1 macrophage polarization. And uh, findings from our lab has actually shown that M2 macrophages are quite integral to um, a mouse model of uh, IPF progression. So we definitely need to have a clinical uh, link uh, that, that um, further uh, juxtaposes these in vitro findings. Thank you. Thank you so much again.